you don't really realize it until you've fabbed up a mechanical room and you've pressed a dozen four inch joints and you went, I did that in 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, or less. Yeah. I mean, it's, Great. it's just crazy. Um, the, the level of, you know, ability that that one tool yeah. sure. gives a contractor or just even a single installer. Right. Everybody, we are the Make Trades Great Again podcast. We do stream everywhere, two episodes a week, and I think you're going to find it interesting if you tune in, give us a shot. We'd really appreciate it. Today we have Becky. Hello. You, Becky. What is your title officially now? Because it's changed it's since changed the last time. Yeah. Uh, Director of Brand and Engagement. Brand and Engagement with Ridge Tool Company, or as we know in the industry, Rigid. Yes, right. Rigid. The brand Rigid and Greenly. And Greenly now. Yep, yep. Our, our sister company specializing in uh, electrical and utility tools. Awesome. And Michael Provenzano, your uh, director of marketing for yes. Rigid. Yes, for a press connection category. For the press connection category, which Andy and I are super familiar with, press tools, press technology. We've been using it for years and years. Yep. And that's where Rigid really is probably best known in the social scene for your tools and, and besides drain cleaning, of course, but like your piping uh, today in 2024, your piping system tools, I mean, iconically is going to be, we're going to think of press tools right away when we think of Ridges. Is that right? It tends to grab the most attraction on social media. Yeah. Yeah. We, we get the most engagement on our press post. Specifically exciting. the ones that you guys post. <laughs> Funny how that works. Well, that leads to my first question. So what uh, what do you think resonates most with Ridge's customers or the HVAC uh, piping, plumbing, heating in the industry Like when it comes to the Ridge catalog? So for me, when you look at our employees, they're incredibly passionate. They're incredibly dedicated to their work. And that's reflected in the products that we offer. And you know, I think that's what red resonates with our, our customers. When you look at our customers, extremely passionate ind individuals. They're all dedicated to the trades. And, and it's really represented within the products that we make and, and the employees that we have uh, within Rigid. Dedication, like as in, like, could you believe that I've even met people that have uh, tattoos of your products on their bodies? I, I'd and, say and, that's dedicated. Do you have one? Do I have one? Well, yeah. it's, it's uncertain if it's me or if I'm speaking of somebody else. But, well, I could say Eric in the third term, right? Is that appropriate here? Okay. Yeah, no. It works. No, of course. Yeah, I do. But, yeah, we, dedication and from not only just from your fan, you know, fans of your brand and, and users of your product, but it reciprocated because we we recognize that in your organization, our employees. Organization. Yeah, yeah it's, it's twofold. It's, it's our employees. It's you've seen you've been through our plant before. Um, at our headquarters in O'Leary, Ohio, where we manufacture a ton of our tools, one being the iconic rigid wrench. And uh, you can see it firsthand in the passion of our employees. Uh, also, there's generations, you know, we talk about our, our brand and how our tools get passed down from generation to generation. That only doesn't just hold true with our customers, it also holds true internally. Um, there's dozens of instances where we have um, uncles, nephews, dads, sons in our plant. Um, as well as our offices. So there's a lot of heritage within our brand, both internally and externally, and the passion's very strong, so strong. You know, it's fun being, it's fun managing this brand um, to see the passion. Uh, it's not often that you see brands on people's, uh, you know, that they carry around all day on their sleeve, literally, not just gear, but um, tattoos. And that's it's a lot of fun. Um, we even have some employees that have tattoos of our brand or pipe wrench or whatever tool category. They may have worked on the line for a decade or more. Um, that that's, speaks volumes to what our brand means to people. There's a special relationship with the brand. For and, sure. And you talked about it with the, the, the you know, fathers and, and the hand-me-down type of thing. Um, but there's also a relationship from a uh, rigid personnel perspective. I mean, we try to get out on job sites as often as we possibly can. We have our, our sales team. They're out there on the job site every day talking with our customers. And most of the time, it's not even about product. It's simply building relationships with these individuals. And uh, that's central to the Rigid brand. I think that's, again, why we resonate with our customers. I, I would say that it's, it's always interesting to me, you know, to get out amongst the entire tool industry there's so much loyalty one way or another and rigid is one of those that 
if you went out on a job site and were like, hey, try out this new tool wrench from XYZ and it was there was rigid there, they're going to probably beat you off the job site. <laughs> um, you know, so Says it's, the it's, guy in a rigid shirt. Yeah, Did I just notice that? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Might have a little bit of passion there. I think you are passionate. So the passion, though, and the recognize that, you know, recognition you guys have achieved through all this, you know, years and years, decades, and in fact, a hundred years yeah. of being in business. So that's a huge part of uh, what everybody's talking about now, what you guys have been talking about for the last couple of years. You turned a hundred years old. Uh, Becky, I know you've only been there for like 90 of them, but the, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, everybody, Becky and I are friends, so I can do her, I can say that. But no, uh, to be determined. <laughs> yeah. well, we used to be friends. No, um, as of as of uh, yesterday, not yeah. sure. <laughs> TBD, I like how, that. how was that? How has the hundred year anniversary been received, and how has it been like within the ranks of rigid? Has it been just exciting? It's been more than exciting. Um, so we embarked on our hundred year anniversary in January twenty twenty three. A um, lot of planning went into it over the course of really from twenty twenty one into twenty twenty three. It was a two year. Um, plan. Um, it's a huge milestone. We took it very seriously. Um, it was it was fun to celebrate alongside not only like our local community, also our employees. We did a ton internally. Um, obviously, our customers and media. So it really we encompassed everybody and got everybody involved. Um, we celebrated the people that made us who we were throughout the years, and it's it's humbling to see, you know, where we started and where we are today. And just our acceptance in the marketplace and, you know, how much people really value our brand. Um, the the water tower, the iconic water tower, I mean, that's that's a staple in Elyria. It's cool. You know, you talk to community members and stuff. Everyone knows Rigid. Everyone knows someone that worked there, whether it was their aunt, uncle. There's always a story. Um, this summer, we did a um, open house. We were able to open it not just to employees, but to employees' families. It was a full-day event. We had... Um, things set up for kids and nieces, nephews, whoever, also retirees. So that was fun. Um, we also had, uh, in January, we launched the Rigid Wrenched 100 beer. So that was fun. Not many brands get to do that. So we, we partnered with a local brewery um, about a half mile from our headquarters. And um, we labeled the beer Wrenched 100. It was the IPA. And it was a ton of fun. So we did, really, we celebrated all year. We did cheers. We sent um, our customers you know, those the glasses, and then we also had the cans, and customers were able to buy it. We sent it to media. Um, our employees all got some. We had it at our open house. So it was it was a lot of fun. And what, I mean, and we know our customers, right? They like to crack open a cold one and enjoy a cold beer. So that was a lot of fun. Rigid experience this year, first ever. We opened it up, and we had a contest and um, had our European friends over. Yeah. I know you guys know some of them that attended. So that was a lot of fun for them being able to walk through our plant, our schoolhouse, and then um, our rigid experience uh, contest that we did in June for the state or for North America. Uh, that was fun. And we had a special, special version of it this year with it being our hundred year anniversary. So a lot of celebration. Um, and then just recently, um, well, the hundred year wrench, that was something that we gave to all of our staff as well as um, media. So lucky winner here today. We'll, we'll get one too. Heck yeah. We brought one with us. Uh, so, after a hundred years, there's no way you get to, you don't get to the hundred year mark with, without paying attention to your customer and just identifying all the challenges that they have in front of them every single day, whether it's running their small businesses, whether it's literally just the apprentice learning how to do a task and using a tool maybe for the first time. So how do you guys go about that process and really understanding your customers and how to help them? Yeah, that goes back to being on the job site. Like more we're out with our customers, the more we're recognizing their pain points. And the more we see their pain points, the better ability that we have to address those, those issues. Um, you know, we're, we're geared towards making people uh, more productive, uh, making their jobs easier, making their jobs safer. And, and, and when we see issues on the job site with a tool or opportunities where a tool might be needed to address one of those challenges, that's where we're focused. And then we have a world-class engineering team to help overcome some of the, the technical challenges to get there. Uh, so it's really a fun process to be a part of. Uh, it's, it's great to be out on those job sites with the individuals and, and recognizing, you know, hey, how can we help these trades people? Yeah. And I, I'm going to add one more thing. We're Everything we do is customer-centric, and I think one thing that our brand does, and 
whether you're a territory manager, product management, engineer, we do a really good job listening. And it's not just on the job site. It's also, you know, we talk about social media and everything that we do there. Uh, social media for us is not just a one-way communication tool for us to promote the brand and get in front of people on the new features and benefits. It also has been a really great listening tool for us. So a lot of the information that we get, it gets shared internally and we use it. I, I mean, yeah. there's, I can't think of recently, at least in the last few years, like meetings that we've had where we're talking about what's next. It's because of, you know, our customers and comments they made and themes that we picked up on. And then we dig deeper into that. Well, I, that's what I was going to say is it seems like, you know, as, as I've seen the evolution of press tools, of your tools in general, mm-hmm. is that you can see that evolution change from the model from last year and the model from 10 years ago. You know, and just the usability of it and how much easier, you know, more compact that, you know, the new rings and, and close quarters jaws and stuff. I mean, I mean, those don't, you just don't go, oh, let's just make something. You know, it's usually a, a, a feedback thing. And, and it's cool to see that, that kind of stuff continually evolve. Yeah. Yeah. Over the last uh, five years, we've launched four new press tools. And we know that everybody wants their tools to be smaller and lighter and, you know, we, we pride ourselves on that. We pride ourselves on making our tools as ergonomic as possible. Right. But we also want to build in the features that, again, make them more productive, make their lives easier on the job site. So, you know, we, we build in best-in-class lighting, um, you know, the ability to swivel uh, with the tool, uh, allow you to access fittings that you normally couldn't access so people don't have to break out the torch. Uh, that, that's really a focus, and, and that's just specific to pressing, but we do that across all of our categories as well. One of the biggest challenges we face, I think, outside of tooling and everything is just this constant change in our market and in our industry where new technology is coming on, government mandates are, are forcing new technology where we're maybe the industry isn't completely ready. Uh, and we're, we're, we're told we can no longer buy equipment. We have to learn how, you know, new processes, new piping systems, new ventilation systems, all that. Where is the biggest, um, where do you guys see, from Ridge's point of view, the biggest opportunity when it comes to it, like helping us as tradespeople run our businesses better or perform the job more efficiently? It's going to be in a variety of areas, and and I think one thing is is the uptime, uh, making sure that those tools have the battery power uh, to to run as long as possible, as long as you possibly can need. When you look at our our drain cleaning side of the business, we have uh, tools that are on our FXP platform. Uh, that give you, you, like if you need 30 minutes, we're gonna give you 45 minutes of runtime. Um, we have uh, tools that are on our 18 volt platform. Uh, for press tools, you get 325 presses per charge on our standard tool. Most of the time, people are only doing less than that. <laughs> so, so you know, we wanna address those, those challenges in, in that way, and a lot of that's uh, related to uptime. What, so 100 years, what, what we're coming on 101 already, right? Isn't yeah, that officially? 101 is, yeah, this month, yeah. Yeah, so like, what is 110 years for Rigid? What is 105 years? What's next for Rigid? As we look e- immediately or further down the road, something that you can talk about, I understand. We've had conversations where they you know, have to be off the record, but on the record, what's what's next for Rigid? So one thing I would say is with, with the brand that's as entrenched in the industry as we are and with so many different product categories, we're going to have a lot of milestones along the way. Uh, this year, we're actually celebrating 25 years of press within North America. So 25 years ago, approximately, we made an acquisition. We recognized an opportunity for press technology, which was much more popular over in Europe at that time. Uh, and uh, we recognized that, hey, let's bring this to, to North America. We partner with Vega. And, and we brought that uh, to, to North America. Um, it's, it's those types of things that, that we like to recognize and, and bring to the forefront of the industry. After 25 years of press though, you're still, you still have critics or you're still trying to win people over. I know we see it uh, on the media side of things when we share information, whether it's on the podcast or feedback we get on our social media. Are you finding uh, in that, in that, with this technology, are you having challenges with builders or building owners or any kind of pushback on architects, engineers that are specifying products. Are we still seeing that 25 years into this kind of technology? Just really, honestly, uh, my career is 25 years old. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. I, you know, like I've been around in this industry for only as long as your technology has or the technology you help build. Yeah. 
Yeah, every day that goes by, the skepticism around press is, is less and less. The people that actually try press, that get into press, they'll recognize that ROI, that benefit, that, that return on investment uh, very quickly. And, and we look to accelerate that. Um, in about a year ago, we launched uh, our RP115, and that was 100% geared towards individuals that were skeptical of press. Oftentimes, those are the one-truck plumbers or people that you know, didn't want to make the investment to outfit 10 different trucks or sharing two tools across a, you know, their 10 trucks. Uh, so we recognize the opportunity uh, to really provide an entry-level tool to those individuals that only did up to three-quarter inch, but covered 75% of the fittings installed or 95% of the jobs and, and, and really allow people to experience press uh, in, in a way that was, I guess, a little bit more affordable to them initially. Uh, and what we see is as people get into it, they recognize, hey, this is extremely productive yeah. for me. I, I can get either on to my next job or I can get home to my family quicker. One or add, yeah, add one more job to your day, right? And yeah. it's not only, I don't know if it's so much, there's there's obviously some skeptics out there, but I think also part of it is awareness and that's what we're doing on social and it is new technology. 25 years obviously isn't that new, but uh, it's one of those things like seeing is believing and, you know, you see people today demoing the tools um, I think it's one of those things. They they see it, they believe it, they demo it, and that's what we push our you know our national sales team. They are doing that. You'll see like Vega, they do the road shows with their trucks. Really, just having um, people put the tool in their hand and try it, and it gives them like a reason to believe. And then also accessibility to the press tools. I mean, it used to only be available through like traditional distribution. Look at the landscape in retail now. Home Depot now has your Vega fittings, right? Look online. Right. So you didn't see you didn't see that two years ago even. Yeah. So the landscape on accessibility has changed, and I think it's becoming more and more. Um, I guess people, the education on it and the awareness on it has grown so much over the years. Yeah, I I think one of the things I've I've taken away from it is we've got an RP three fifty that we run, and we've just here in the last year picked up um, MegaPress XL jaws to go up through four inch. Megapress and Eric was just out in Missoula and we did a video and it's putting that fitting system I mean you come see it at the trade show it's like wow this thing's huge that's really cool it's super fast you you don't really realize it until you've fabbed up a mechanical room and you've pressed a dozen four inch joints and you went I did that in 30 minutes yeah yeah I mean or less yeah. I mean it's Great. it's just crazy um the the level of you know, ability that that one tool yep. sure. gives a contractor or just even a single installer. Right. And that's just your example too. Like think of the efficiency, oh, yeah. one, one person, no fire watch, no, not dangerous. And like, think of like the setting, like if you have to, for example, hospitals, like you can't just go in yep. like they have to evacu evacuate the floor, et cetera. So there's so many more efficiencies, but until you try it. Right. Well, something we talk about a lot on the podcast is just efficiency. Like you guys are already, but as a contractor, somebody going out and doing service type work. And so Andy and I do very similar work in our businesses, but it's always customer focus. How can I inconvenience my customer the least? How can I be more efficient and more profitable? Uh, and so that starts with technology like that. Of course, we all try new technology or we're at least open to it initially, or it's trying to be sold to us. And maybe some people are initially skeptical. I'm not sure, but I'm a, I'm a early adopter kind of guy, as you guys know yep. that well. But, but uh, the efficiency is the number one thing. And then ultimately, I do know this to be true. And it's not conversations I have with my customers, but it's the feedback I get is very clear. You were in and out fast. It, oh, you didn't smell or I didn't hear you, you know making a lot of noise down there. And it's because I, I can diagnose problems quickly and with the technology, I can get that problem fixed fast and safely. So that's the other thing too. And we're working in historic homes, or in my case, a lot of times I'm working in you know old farmhouses that are 120 years old. Yeah. If I start up a torch in their basement, whether I'm working on a refrigeration system, a heating system, you name it, uh, that's a risk. It just is truly a risk, not because my insurance company tells me so, it's been literally because I could burn their house down if you're not careful, or if you leave too soon, you didn't notice something was wrong, right? Mistakes are made. I'm not gonna burn a, an apartment building down, a 120 year old fa farmhouse down or anything with a press tool, it's just not gonna happen. And so efficiency, safety, that's huge uh, to me in my business. So I think you guys are great. I think the products are great. I'm glad you guys are on here. Uh, 
as far as you know the what's next it's cool to see you guys looking at what your customers are doing now and where you're going with the technology in the future uh and how it's changed so much just recently like you said you could go to home depot now and buy this stuff that you know 25 years ago was people were skeptical sure. you know, right. it's changed quite a bit well i mean not not even 25 years ago like think of Think of the retail setting oh, three just years a, ago, right? Yeah, just a few years ago for sure. We got people piling in because they know there's going to be a tool they want, giveaway. They want to, we know who's not going to win. <laughs> Becky, Michael, thanks for coming on. Andy, you want to add anything before we go? I don't think so. I'm just, like I say, excited, excited to be, you know, be able to talk to you guys about it and, and keep this thing moving. He's fanboying over here with this rigid shirt on. Well, I mean, he's he's got the shirt. You got the tattoo. I you weren't supposed to tell anybody I that. I might even have some socks on from the other night. Oh, he's even wearing his rigid socks. Oh, oh, my goodness. I don't know how credible this interview was. <laughs> I feel like I feel like everybody sitting here is like, what the heck? Yeah. These guys are like, do you work for the company? I mean, I have mechanical hub socks. Wait, are you guys hiring? I have mechanical no. hub socks. You have me- no. Wait, I, what, I don't have mechanical hub socks. Not yet. That's are we a, hiring? Hey. Heather, can we get mechanical hub socks? You know, I'd hire Heather in a heartbeat. I don't know about you two. Listen to that. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks everybody for listening. I know it's you know super fun listening to a podcast live. I, I think it's great. It's fun having you guys here. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, if you haven't checked out our show, we stream everywhere. I mean, everybody knows the podcast is, right? We're even on YouTube. We do video. You're going to be on video. Just... Oh, am I? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that. And uh, it's Make Trades Great Again. And like I said, find us anywhere. Do uh, really appreciate it. And thank you guys for coming on the show.